or I use it just very simply to generate compassion for myself when I suffer. May I be free from this suffering instead of rejection. Usually we reject it, we get angry at ourselves, at the doctors, at the people who created the substances who made us sick. We go to court, we sue them. Using Dharma viewpoints to understand suffering. That would be going for refuge to the Buddha, Dharma and the Supreme Assembly. Then it says, until I'm enlightened. So it doesn't put a time, or it does, but it will take a long, long time until all negative emotions get eliminated. Are you prepared to go that far? And if you're not prepared to go that far, do you have a choice? So this is, you know, what we have to get in contact with is this yearning for goodness, for purity, for freedom, for peace, for space. Again, try not to look at me. Really look inside. Find it. Everybody has it. Get in contact with that. It's the yearning for enlightenment. You don't need to be a Buddhist. Enlightenment means you have the skills, the wisdom, the compassion, and the love uninterruptedly, effortlessly, to be of benefit to all sentient beings, 24 hours a day. If one could buy it, I assure you many people would buy that. Because that is our nature. Not to harm. Our nature is to, not to harm, but to help. <coughs> so that's what it means, until I'm enlightened. Not for happiness now. But if you look that far, and if you apply the methods, antidotes for negative emotions, understanding why we suffer, happiness will come. You don't need to have this as a motivation. More peace in your life will come, more space, <clears throat> less suffering, at least mental suffering. But if it's just words, nothing changes. Because going for refuge also means, hey, I'm protected here. Because we say to the Buddha, the Diamond, the Supreme Assembly, and we don't just need, mean one Buddha, we mean all the Buddhas and all the Bodhisattvas. So before you say these words, actually, you visualize all the Buddhas and all the Bodhisattvas in the space in front of you. Again, try to close your eyes, don't look at me. Sit in meditation, do this as an analytical meditation, because taking refuge is an analytical meditation. Otherwise it becomes just lip service. And then to try to feel the presence of all these Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Or just the trust that even I don't feel anything, but they are there. Not in form of paintings and statues, but in the form of a fully awakened mind of universal compassion, wisdom, and skillful means to be able to inspire me, to open me up, So I can also get in contact with my own goodness. We all have it. So then go there. Because if you don't go there, if you don't go into your own goodness, then the Buddha becomes again like God, you know, something like a punishing father that we have to be afraid of. We don't have to be afraid of the Buddha. They're there to help us. To help us to what? To develop our own potential or to find it. We don't need to download it, it's already there. So maybe for a short time, just think, I'm a good person. 
I am a good person and relax into that thought. Otherwise, it wouldn't be here. Stop punishing yourself. There's no point. We all have the potential to be happy, to be helpful, to be compassionate, to be loving. And whenever these minds come up, we feel really good. And we feel normal. And it feels natural. It doesn't feel unnatural. So from your own goodness, natural goodness, which is very spacious, go back to thinking all the Buddhas, all the Bodhisattvas, the Bodhisattvas, eighth level upwards there. No, at first level actually, already you can manifest in different ways. They're always there. I just need to connect with them. You don't need to become a Buddhist to connect with them, okay? What you connect with is compassion and wisdom. If the word Buddha as a religion is disturbing you, connect to some energy that has developed that mind. Like the blue sky that doesn't have any clouds. And ask for blessing and inspiration. Open up. Hey, I need help. Where are you? See, the help is always there, but we're not open. We need to open up. And the Buddha does not put the condition on you that you have to become a Buddhist. Because they made that promise, just as we do now. Next part of this taking refuge. In order to benefit all sentient beings. Forget about the text. Don't, don't get distracted. Everybody who is fully awakened has made that promise in order to benefit all sentient beings. They didn't say, in order to benefit the Buddhists. Can we trust that? That there are minds who are so developed that the only reason for them to be is to benefit. Means me as well. Can we open up to that energy? And then to nourish that yearning, so in order to go a few steps towards the goal, I want to become like them. This is why I'm practicing this, so I can benefit all sentient beings. And then you make the mind very wide. Because also, you see, these sentient beings are always here around us. Maybe not just one meter away from us, maybe whatever, but we're constantly surrounded by sentient beings. We just don't notice. We isolate ourselves. We make the thought of me and all the others. But we're constantly connected to them. The air that you're breathing in now, somebody else was breathing it out. It's not your air. And that connects us. The clothes we're wearing, the house we're in, the beds we're sleeping in, the food we're eating, the microphones we're using, the tables, the cups, everything we're using, somebody else made. So try to feel your something of your clothes. And think, wow, so many other beings made this piece of garment. And try to feel the connection. Thanks to them, I can wear this. I want to repay that kindness. And then try to see whether that is a pleasant mind. The thought, I want to repay that kindness. Or the thought, I want to be a benefit to them. I want to do something for them. Develop my mind in love, compassion, and wisdom. So whenever I meet them, even I don't know, they made my t-shirt. But I can be helpful instead of being unkind or harmful. Okay, try to see what these thoughts do to you. 
experience it. This is what meditation is all about. Not, don't make notes. Really go inside. Then the mind will transform. The mind will not transform by you having a full notebook. That will just be laying on your table. When you experience these minds, then you create habits, tendencies. And then you visualize all sentient beings around you. So you have to go very far to the outer end of the universe. If you're a Buddhist, you have to go to the hell realms, to the hungry ghost realms. Animals we can see, but we go down to the smallest insect. And as a Buddhist also you go to the demigods and to the gods. On top of it to the form and formless realm. On top of it to the bardo beings. Innumerable sentient beings, so your mind becomes very, very wide. For all these beings I am doing this practice. Not for all these beings at the same time, <coughs> but again, Whoever I will meet, may I be of benefit to them. You see, you have some people in your life that when you think about them, it makes you happy. So that's the thought. Whoever thinks about me, may it make them happy. Whoever talks about me, I are not given reason to criticize because it's not the right happiness we want to give others. It's not about me, it's about the happiness of others. I not disturb their peace of mind. And the best way to benefit them is to lead them to full awakening. All these beings around us. Because we tend to forget them. And we see that this is a huge task, so we have to say and we have to think. In order to be able to do that, I have to become a fully awakened being. Meaning I have to also discover my own limitless compassion, love, wisdom, and the skillful means that comes with it. So then we know where we want to go. We have a goal far away, but it doesn't matter. The moment you start to create the causes for your, for your enlightenment, which is taking refuge, that creates causes for enlightenment. These causes will ripen at one point as enlightenment. And then we train the mind in love, compassion and wisdom. Uh, sorry, love, compassion, joy, and equanimity. This is page 11 in your booklet. And there also, again, it can be just words, or you can have the emotion that goes, the mental factor that goes with it. So first of all, again, keep these all sentient beings in your mind. The all sentient beings, of happiness and the causes of happiness. So sometimes it's a bit more, it makes us a bit more substance when you say, wouldn't it be wonderful if all sentient beings had happiness and the causes of happiness? We all want a better world. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have a better world? There is so much unnecessary suffering. It's crazy. It's unnecessary. It comes from wrong views, negative emotions, greed, aggression, hatred, wanting to pay back, retaliation, feeling like the victim, thinking that you're allowed to do this because the other one started it. Totally convinced of that stupid view. 
That goes for small things and that goes for big things. Totally convinced. They started it. Nobody started it. So wouldn't it be wonderful if all beings had happiness and the causes for happiness? It was the same as with us. When you're happy, you're not harming anybody, naturally. There's no wish to harm when you're happy. You're very tolerant, very patient. Then you're at your best, because that's your nature. And we see that it's not exactly like this, so we go like, wow, my old sentient beings be free from suffering. And the causes of suffering, that's compassion. Wouldn't it be wonderful if all beings were free from suffering? And the causes of suffering. And then we get a bit more involved in that, and we say, May I be able to liberate them from the suffering and the causes of suffering? All beings. So think about especially the people you dislike. Because there the mind resists. Everybody else, but not them. Or people are close to you. May I be able to liberate them from their wrong views of harming others is make is creating happiness. And then in order not to despair, because when we look at all the suffering in the world, one can despair very, very quickly. We start to think everybody has the capacity to be free from suffering, because it's based on wrong views about reality. Everybody's mind, by nature, is pure. So what can we lose when we start to think like that? Okay, check yourself. Because we refuse to believe it. We say, yes, but. So what can you lose if you start to think you and all other beings have the potential to be free from negative emotions? What can you lose? And what's the point of hanging on to that view? Some people by nature are bad. What's the point? If we want to have a better world. So we start to think, you know, may all, wouldn't it be wonderful if all sentient beings were never separated from the happiness of liberation and full enlightenment, having a fully developed mind fully awakened mind. And then we know that we ourselves, we are very biased, so we know that we also have to create equanimity. So that's the last verse there. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from attachment for friends and hatred for enemies. Again, the yearning for a better world. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from attachment for friends and hatred for enemies, and indifference towards the ones that we think are not interesting. Okay, so that's that meditation on the four immeasurables. It's very good to do that in the morning before you go out of the house. Then we see how what hypocrites we are. You know, we get, we feel like half Buddhas in the morning, like oh my all beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. Then we go out. We could make somebody happy by giving them parking lot. You know, two cars, one empty spot. You say, okay, you go. You would make them so happy. One person at least. We don't even do that. No, it's mine. Does it say your name on it? I have to go to work. Well, most probably this other person also. 
And again, if you have to go to work and it's possible to take public transport, then take public transport. Then you don't need to look for a, for a parking space. Yeah. Okay, you'll be squashed in, but you'll be on time if the train or the bus is on time. You don't kind of circle around half an hour finding, trying to find a free spot. And you make very nice contact sometimes on the public transport. How many of you take regular public transport? Great. It's a great place to make enemies or to make friends. Whether you make enemies or friends, it depends on you. Yeah? The more considerate you are about the others, the more you make friends. Then you can put this already into practice. You give your seat, uh, you help somebody with their suitcase, you let them go first, whatever. It's so easy. But no, we wait until we can lead them to enlightenment. Before, <laughs> I need to meditate. Before, I cannot do something. Because I don't know if it's really helping them. Maybe it will make them dependent. This is usually the, the best excuse that we have. Oh, no, 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 no. They will not grow up. It will make them dependent. And this is how you start with your bodhicitta motivation. You give them your seat when the train is full. Unless, because, as you said yesterday, chronic disease. You, you cannot take it to stand, then don't, yeah? But if you think I can stand this quarter of an hour or, you know. Anyway, if you make it your practice to always be the last one on, to go in, then you don't need to give your seat because you won't have one. So it's very easy. Then you don't feel like a good person, I'm giving my seat, yeah? So then there's no arrogance about it because the seats are already taken. Okay, then we go to the seven limb practice, which is page 16. So this is to generate these, six, this said 16, these seven antidotes for seven negative mental factors. Referently, I prostrate with my body, speech, and mind. So again, we're not just doing the words. I'll tell you the words. If possible, put your texts down and try to reflect on it until you get the mental factor. Because then it will have an effect. Which is words, it will have an effect, but very, very small. Yeah. And then once you reflected on these things, then you just have to take the, 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 the line, and then the mind you automatically goes into that state. The same thing, you know. If you dislike somebody in this course, but it's the first time that you meet that person, the dislike is very small. Some, something disturbs you, either the clothes or the way they sit or the shoes or I don't know what. But then the mind obsessively goes there again and again and again and again. It actually, instead of just leaving the person alone, yeah, you go there obsessively and you look and, ah, you know, again, or again that t-shirt, again that this, again this, this. So you, you, you familiarize the mind with how, how awful this person is. So then, you, you only need to see the shoes of the person there, and already the negative mind is here. You don't even know if it's really the person's shoes, especially if you have these Havaiana flip-flops. You know, like everybody has like the same flip-flops. Like last, last course, they, people they couldn't find theirs because it was same color, same brand, same size. And it was very important that I find mine. Wow. Right. Okay, so... Um, so this is, you train the mind, or it can come, become so obsessive that you drive on the highway and then the same car comes, same color, same car. Already, that just by seeing the car, you get this averse feeling. Yeah? Or somebody having the same name or whatever. So this is why when you start with these things, if you do that at home, it's good to reflect on those things, not just to go reverently across to body, speech of mind, at the same cloud. Every type of offering, actual and imagined, and I declare all my negative actions accumulate since beginning with times and rejoice in the merit of all holy and ordinary beings. Please remain until samsara ends and join the will of Dharma for living beings. I dedicate my own merits of myself and all others to the great enlightenment. Do you think something happened in the mind? A little bit something, but not much. But a little bit something, yes. Because we know that words have influence. You tell a kid that it's an idiot, it will, it will, it doesn't take very long. It starts to believe it. Yeah, especially children because their mind is still very, they captive. They kind of take, take the things very, very quickly. Yeah, so like that. So kids, you should always encourage them. Yeah. 
also grown-ups, why not? Why not his children? Okay, so the first one is an antidote to arrogance. I can this alone, I don't need any help. Yeah. You know, I've done people I've done courses where not in Israel. People were in the course and they constantly told me they don't need a guide, they don't need a teacher. And I just, I answered, then why are you here? I know this by myself, I don't need a guide. I just, well, and he was really, it was a man, he really disturbing the whole course. By, why do I need a Buddha? Why do I need the instructions? I can do this alone. I said, well, why are you here? Oh, because I'm friends of the one who organized the course. <laughs> That's what it was. That's what it was. Like it, you know, Tushita, when I was starting, sometimes people would say, because there weren't so many guest houses at that time, I couldn't find a room down in Macau Ganj, so I thought I'd come and do the course. So that was, that was the motivation. Yeah. So if, but for everything we know and for everything we can do, we needed somebody to show us, even if it's just, Wikipedia or Google or whatever now. Now we don't even, we think we don't need human beings. Do you ever think when you look at a tutorial or like a Wikipedia, that somebody wrote this? Not the computer. The computer didn't write it. A human being wrote it. Yeah. But then we read it and then it becomes my knowledge. <laughs> or ways. Okay? Ways who is directing you safely home. Yeah, somebody made this. Somebody invented this. Yeah. It's not the voice that comes out, it's somebody who stands behind the voice. So then we appreciate and we are <coughs> grateful. Grateful is a very, very, very soft and very, very pleasant mind. You know, when you go about or go on about all the things you don't have, this is a scratchy mind, you know, it's a mind very narrow and there's like Ehh. Yeah, wherever whenever you move it scratches. When you from time to time you sit down and you go like oh, I have so much. Because we all have so much. Just this fact that we're all well fed. We think it's normal. And we're not just well fed, we also have all this choice about what we can eat. We have so much. So to appreciate, so it's a mind that appreciates and it's a mind that is grateful. So we do that for two minutes. Reverently, I prostrate with my body, speech and mind. Again, don't look at me, you don't have to be devoted to me. Look inside, devoted to your own goodness. That's one thing that is really lacking, self-respect. We're very selfish people. But do we have self-respect? Do we really appreciate that our nature is goodness and spaciousness and natural intelligence that we all have? Very often it's covered. And unfortunately we identify with, we identify with what is covering it. If you're a Buddhist, when you go this, the most powerful thing when you say, reverently I prostrate with my body, speech and mind, you're not prostrating to the historical Buddha. Don't look at me, look inside. Why is that so difficult? What are you afraid of? The most powerful way to do that and to take refuge is you prostrate to your own future result of becoming a Buddha. That is called resultant refuge. The other one is causal refuge. Try to have some appreciation for your own goodness and your interest in developing a good heart. I mean, how more wonderful could that be? You're here because, because you have interest in developing a good heart. Otherwise, you know, just prostrating to the Buddha becomes very tasty. And that's not what Buddhism is all about. It's not the high and mighty Buddha up there and me, the poor sinner down here. It is not. It's to appreciate.